Hi everyone, today we're going to do a good old fashioned hardware upgrade video. This machine behind me is my main one, it's got a 2.5 gig NIC inside. Today we're going to upgrade it to this 10 GTEC 10 gig NIC, hopefully to get some better transfer speeds between that thing and my TrueNAS server which is over in the rack. So let's get into it. Alright, so over here is the machine in question. The other side of this wall here is where my bench setup is with all my monitors and I just have these back here to save space. This is the main machine here. It's got the 2.5 integrated NIC in the motherboard that it came with. And it is hooked up to this switch over here over RJ45 Ethernet cable Cat5e into one of these SFP Plus adapters. The other one is a 10 gig uplink over Cat5. Cat5e, we'll talk about that in a second, back to the switch. So after, after we get this new 10 gig NIC in here, it just has the SFP Plus port and we'll hook it up to this, uh, this um, DAC cable directly over to that switch. And just for a little more context, this is the TrueNAS server, Dell R510. It has a 10 gig NIC as well, all flowing through this 10 gig unified backbone switch, the aggregate switch. There's a 10 gig link coming out of that over, RJ, over RJ45 Cat5e. And it comes out here and goes into that other switch I was just showing you. All right, this should be relatively straightforward. <laughs> famous, famous last words. So I'm typically seeing something like 270, 280 uh, megabytes per second when I'm transferring files to the TrueNAS instance from this machine. And then something more like 200 at the most, maybe an average of 170 to 180 megabytes per second pulling things down from the TrueNAS to this machine. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to beat. That's that's the game plan here. Let's see. I don't know how this case works. I think this is the one I want right here. Sorry about my hand. Uh, had to take my cat to the vet this week and let's just say she doesn't like being there. We should have plenty of room to slide this guy in. All right, that's seated in there. It's not often I get to <laughs> tinker around and, and do stuff like this. It's kind of fun. I used to do this stuff all the time when I was a little kid, constantly messing with computers. It's kind of therapeutic to, to work on these things. I, I don't find the time to do it much anymore, or I suppose I should say I don't really have a reason. All right, got it in that slot there. Plenty of clearance from the below the video card there. I don't think heat's going to be an issue at all. So let's boot this thing up and see if it works. Okay, all wired back up. Here's that DAC cable going in to the new card over here, of course. Here it is right here. And this is what I, this is what I took out, uh, a little converter. One thing that makes me super nervous about these is they get super warm, like almost painful to the touch. So whenever I can do DAC, it's, I, I definitely prefer it. All right, <laughs> computer's on, I got it working. A little bit more of an ordeal than I had anticipated. I can't really recommend this particular card if you're running Windows 11. So apparently Intel dropped support for this family of products. So it's not a uh, 10 GTEx fault. This particular card uses some Intel chips and Intel dropped support for Windows 11 for some reason. So I found some sketchy Reddit post where some someone figured out that if you use an older version of the Windows 10 driver, it just magically works on Windows 11. So I'll link to this in the description just in case you need that information al along with the exact card I bought. It does work, but maybe I'm living on borrowed time. Uh, so kind of kind of worried, but not worried enough to return it. So the moment I've been waiting for is, did we get a speed improvement? And the answer is yes. So I've got a 10 gigabyte file here on my desktop. This is an empty folder in my TrueNAS instance. We're going to pull that over there and look at that. We're pushing over 400, almost 500. So before I was getting like 280 was pretty good there. It, oh, it bumped up 550. So yeah, it's like twice, almost twice as good. 
I've actually got into the 600s. I'd say twice as good. So that's like awesome. That makes that makes buying that 10 gig switch and all this 10 gig gear like so worth it. Uh, and then the other direction, I was getting a little worse. I, I'm not sure why. It was more like 180 to 200. So let's copy that same file back the other direction. And yeah, it's just as good. 500 megabytes per second. 600. So awesome. So I don't know that that's full 10 gig, Nick speed that could be the cat 5e connections i have i'm actually going to have a video where i totally redo that 24 port switch it makes a ton of, ton of noise i can hear it right now i have to edit out a bunch of audio uh when i make youtube videos i'm going to totally redo that and so i've got some cat 6 stuff coming and i'm going to have a cat 6 line coming directly to this machine from the aggregate switch and i think that'll make things even better all right, so I know that wasn't the most scientific speed test in the world, but it was apples to apples. I used the same file in the, with the 2.5 gig NIC and then after the upgrade. Sure, the ZFS cache maybe on the TrueNAS instance was helping out a little bit, but I can already tell a difference and, and just even the speed, speed alone and the throughput that it's capable of, I'm super happy with it. I actually edit these files, these videos right in Premiere off the NAS, so I can already tell a difference. It's way less sluggish, super snappy, it's going to save me tons of time. It makes me want to upgrade all, all the other machines I have. Uh, and it finally makes me feel like I'm getting my money's worth out of this 10 gig infrastructure I've been working on over the past couple years. So I know this wasn't as exciting as my other videos, but thanks for following along and I'll see you in the next one.